All right, now turning from existentialist theory to uh, existentialist practice in education, uh, our question then is what do these core existentialist themes of choice, commitment, uh, responsibility mean for educational practice? If we uh, remain true to those and make those our fundamentals, never deviating from them in the process of uh, schooling or educating children. Let's take up first this uh, theme of choice. Uh, as a fundamental, what this means is that the educational system should never in any way override or undercut the child's capacity, the developmental capacity for exercising choice. Our capacity for choice is the fundamentally, distinctively human thing about us, and so that is the thing that is our, our bedrock, right, so to speak. Now, what this means uh, 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 fundamentally for the teacher uh, is that the teacher's role in the existentialist school is very different from the traditional, much more top-down authoritarian approach to, to education here. The teacher is in no way a priest, right, for example, in charge of the, the, uh, the student's soul uh, with the authority to dictate in any way what the, should be going on in the child's soul or in the child's mind. So here the existentialists uh, see idealism with this emphasis on the teacher as an authoritarian top-down figure, uh, particularly teachers who use compulsion. All of that is uh, completely uh, alien and, and, and outrightly wrong from the, the existentialist perspective here. So idealism uh, is just simply out, and in many cases, one of the great whipping boys for, for the existentialist approach. Uh, and then more broadly speaking, uh, the, the broadly religiously philosophical approach, which typically is very top-down, hierarchical, and authoritarian, uh, we think here of traditional religious education, that is entirely alien to the existentialist approach. We are choosers, and we should make our own choices, our own commitments. The teacher facilitates those choices. But equally so, uh, existentialists are hostile to much of the educational approach that comes out of modern science. And here we can think of behaviorism uh, uh, as an example. Behaviorists, of course, bill themselves as the latest and greatest thing in uh, the scientific approach to, uh, to, to life. And they make no bones about uh, being beyond freedom, beyond dignity. They uh, want to set up uh, uh, the teacher as the psychologist king, right, so to speak, to take the latest and greatest techniques from behavioral conditioning and to impose them again on students to, uh, to teach students to be uh, exalted uh, laboratory rats, right, so to speak. But again, we have a top-down and authoritarian dictatorial approach to education, and that is out, flat out fundamentally wrong, right, from the, the, uh, the existentialist approach. So just as the existentialists will see themselves as hostile to traditional religion and traditional uh, science, both of them for being top-down and controlling, any element of that in the classroom is uh, fundamentally wrong. Uh, both of them override human choice and thereby strip us from our, our humanness, uh, the fundamentally th uh, thing being our, our choice element here. What we should then be doing is uh, leaving students to make their own choices and then once students have made choices and made commitments, guiding them and facilitating them along their chosen paths here. Now here, for example, be, uh, existentialists will ask us to consider how many parents prior to school, uh, children entering the formal school uh, uh, system, uh, how many parents will approach the raising right of their children. Obviously, there are basic hygiene and, and feeding issues that have to be attended to. But for the most part, what parents will do is put before, before the child or in, in the nursery or around the apartment or the home, make available to the child any number of interesting things. But they won't force the child to do anything in particular. Instead, what the ch parents will do is wait for the child to express some interest in something that is uh, before the child. Then once the child has made a choice, uh, expressed some interest and is, is uh, committed to playing with something or other, then the parent uh, interacts with the child and facilitates and helps the child uh, develop uh, uh, his or her ability to, to, uh, to interact with whatever it is, to master some skill or to be able to do something or other. And then when the child is no longer interested in that, the parent doesn't force it, the child moves on and is interested in playing something else, the parent then facilitates the child's uh, ability to do so. So what we're doing is letting the child make the first step uh, and then facilitating the child's uh, uh, 
uh, exercise there. And then you know, the child fails, the child succeeds, uh, the, the assessment is built into, into the process there. So the child is taking charge of his or her own uh, education and the parent is, uh, is helping out. Now if you think about then at the other end, what kind of life, particularly in the modern world, we are preparing students for once they leave the formal education system. Well, we don't live in a culture that tells you whom you're going to be friends with, what your career is going to be, whether you're going to be married, whether you're going to have children, how long you're going to stay at this career, whether you're going to have this career or that career, what you're going to believe religiously, how you're going to vote politically, whether you're going to be engaged or not with the political process and so forth. Instead, in all of those areas, we leave adults free to make their own choices, to make their own commitments, and then of course we hold them responsible for the, the commitments that they have made there. So the question then is, if prior to formal schooling we're emphasizing choice and facilitating choice, and if after uh, we uh, have school students leaving the, the, the formal school system we're emphasizing choice and then uh, uh, holding people responsible for the choices they made. The natural existentialist question then is why in many cases do we do things in formal school exactly the opposite of that? We take away choices from students, we tell them to sit, in, uh, sit down, to listen, to be passive, to do what they're told, to move when the bell rings, uh, and the teacher is the authority figure, and whatever the teacher says, the students are supposed to follow along the teacher's lead here. So the point is that formal schooling should be preparation for life. In fact, uh, formal schooling should be a part of life, uh, not a completely different uh, uh, social structure and so forth.